ladies and gentlemen, this is a story that came out in The Guardian, December 29th, 2017. And this story is not only about this one woman that I'm about to tell you about, but a whole legacy of this happening in the past to many of our grandmothers and great grandmothers that may still be living today. You know, these things really didn't happen that long ago, ladies and gentlemen. I know they always talk that long time ago, but technically it really wasn't that long ago when this was very prevalent. And, and with Daniel Halsclaw, it just go to show you it's still happening, even to this day. Recky Taylor, Black Alabama woman raped by six white men in 1944, dies aged 97. Yeah, she was rest in power. I mean, she did live a very full life to make it to 97. Taylor was attacked by six white men as she walked home from church. Men who admitted assault, the assault, and they were not indicted, of course, the all-white jury. See, ladies and gentlemen, that's why they want all-white juries, even to this day. You know, you notice they're not worried about affirmative action when it comes down to juries. They still want to keep the juries predominantly white in this country at all costs. Because they're all in cahoots with each other. All right, so this Alabama woman in 1944 died on Thursday, um, and she was 97. Taylor died in her sleep at a nursing home in Abbeville. Her brother, Robert Corbett, said, he said Taylor had been in good spirits the previous day, and her death was sudden. She would have been 98, wow, on Sunday had she lived. Taylor's story, along with those of other Black women attacked by white men during the civil rights era, is told in At the Dark End of the Street, a book by Danielle McGuire, released in 2010. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what? Years ago, I remember I was having a conversation is back when I had white friends and we were talking about the women's movement, which I was not into because I just didn't feel they did much for black women. So I'm, you know, it never impressed me. So anyway, um, she was frank and told me, you know why they really didn't want black women in the women's movement because the white women in the movement really didn't want to hear about their men raping black women. They didn't want to hear it. This is why, as you notice over the years, the women's movement never ever supported black women that were sexually assaulted, but they'll gladly rally around a white woman that was sexually assaulted, whether she was assaulted by a black, a Hispanic man, or even a white man. But they won't support black women, especially black women that come forward and they were raped by men of other races. They will not support them. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, it goes right back to that racism that this country was built on. And you know what, when she told me that, you know what? Black women should not be involved in any type of groups like that. The only type of women groups we should be involved in is the kind that is inspiring and building of our own community and started by us, not started by women outside of us. We should not be part of that. And that's just my opinion. Taylor stories uh, is one that I even heard from my grandmother and her friends when I was growing up. <sighs> wow. 
Wow. The Rape of Ricky Taylor is directed by Nancy Bursky, best known for directing The Loving Story about Mildred and Richard Loving. That's the interracial couple. Um, that uh, the case that went to the Supreme Court. This is such an important time in this country's path to recognize Ricky Taylor. Um, with women being singled out on Time Magazine cover as part of the Me Too campaign, I really want to draw attention to the Black women who spoke up when their lives were seriously in danger. Yeah, but you see, the problem is the ones that did speak up, you really didn't want to believe them. Um, and from what I understand, even with Daniel Hothclaw, um, women did speak up. Those Black women did speak up. But it wasn't until he raped, I believe the woman was 67 years old, an elder Black woman, and she came forward, then they finally believed it. But he got complained on multiple times, and, and because they were all Black women, it got ignored. And see, he knew what he was doing. He was trying to go after the kind of woman that he felt no one would believe. Okay, Taylor was 24 when she was abducted and raped as she walked home from church in Abbeville. Her attackers left her on the side of a road in an isolated area. The National Association for Advancement of Color People in AACP, which is absolutely useless, assigned Rosa Parks to investigate the case, and she rallied support for justice for Taylor. Two all-white, all-male, <laughs> there you go. Now you know why it didn't go nowhere. Two all-white, all-male juries, grand juries, declined to indict the six white men who actually admitted they did this to her. They admitted it. Who admitted to authorities that they assaulted her. In an interview in 2010, um, Taylor said she believed the men who attacked her were dead, but she still would like to um, she would like an apology from officials. Well, poor woman probably will never get that. <laughs> it would mean a whole lot to me, Taylor said. The people who done this to me, they can't do no apologizing. Most of them is gone. And she's right. But you got to look at it. She's a woman of her time and you know, she's not going to ask for much. I mean, she really should have got financial retribution and, you know, and those men should have been found guilty. They did confess to raping her. So it, it, this whole thing is disgusting. The Alabama legislature passed a resolution apologizing to her in 2011. Bursky told the Guardian that during the civil rights movement, issues like equal accommodation and voting rights became more vital to the general population than issues about sexual stuff. That was something that people put aside, that people didn't want to talk about. It was unseemly to talk about and certainly to fight about. But Bursky said the movement remained rooted in what one academic has called a body claim to own a space. A debt, Bursky said, owed partly to women like Taylor. That was her legacy, Bursky said. Recky Taylor was so courageous, so brave to have spoke, uh, to spoke up. But you know what? She did, but she was still a black woman <laughs> down in Alabama. So we know they purposely do this on purpose. They act like our word is nothing. Just the word of white people is to be all of the universe and it's bullshit. And the bottom line is, you know, our women were not believed 
1944. And if they step forward and say they are raped by a white man, they are not believed today. And that has never changed, ladies and gentlemen. They don't want to believe us. And they know what their men have done. These women ain't that damn stupid. They know. They just don't want to hear about it. Please tell me what you think. Please leave your comment and subscribe. And don't forget to hit on that notification bell. And ladies and gentlemen, also remember on the FBI table, okay, 67% of the rapes that occur in America are done by white men. Okay. And this story definitely fits it to a T. Peace, family.